Hey, hey chicks. chicks. Today, we're gonna talk about hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's the thing. It is December in Minnesota. The tundra, which means that there is no hay growing. Hmm. No, but there is grass actually underneath that snow. Right, but you Just can't cut it. Horse. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. Anyways, so we have a little thing that we wanted to talk to you about today because um, we thought there's probably other people that are still experiencing our pain, and we thought we were going to be out of this pain. We actually promised ourselves we would never, ever be back in this spot again. But here we are. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> this last year we have we have ordered hay. And we have purchased hay. Mm -hmm. We returned hay, and now we purchased it again. Mm -hmm. You know how the stock market goes? Mm -hmm. It goes up and up. It's the hay market. Up. It's the hay market. It is a commodity, and right now, hay is expensive. Mm -hmm. So we bought hay. We actually ordered hay back in May before they cut hay here mm -hmm. in Minnesota, and he just couldn't get anything for us. And so um, come, what was it, September? We started really looking for. Um, well, it was yeah. We didn't we didn't know that we couldn't get it until later, September. You know? Yeah. And so by the time we were searching, we were, the resources were limited, mm -hmm. and so we ended up finding some hay, and it was more like a haylage hay. You know, it was it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was gorgeous. It's about as green as it can get. Mm -hmm. Smells wonderful. Mm -hmm. Lots of alfalfa. Was tested. Well, yeah, and I mean, and it was not cheap. It was very expensive, and we had to drive an hour and a half one way for me and two hours for you. Mm -hmm. So, um, with that being said, we had a bunch of issues happen from this thing. <laughs> so, sorry, and just talking about alfalfa makes me sneeze. <laughs> right, and so we got this stuff. This was the kind of hay that you put out in front of your horses, and they are going to put on some weight. So, oh, a lot yes. of people like that kind of hay. Unfortunately, we had a couple horses that didn't do in fair well with them. Actually, you're still dealing with it, one of our right. faves. Yep. So, anyway, so what we thought was we needed to put this video together to explain to you guys that um, there's certain things that you should look for, not look for, and run away from. The first thing is, when do you order hay? Yes, when Tip do you guys order hay? Well, typically you should do it before it freezes. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and you should probably do it before they have all of their cuttings done. The ideal time is in the spring, find your farmer. Right. Try and keep with this farmer. If yes. they can supply you, you want to stick with the same person. Yes. It's so much easier to not have to screw around and look for someone new every year and to provide you hay. Right, because you never know what you're gonna find. Right, and if you're going to a hay auction and if you have horses that have special needs, I'm gonna tell you what, you are going to be dancing around fire in there because you don't know when those people were cutting that hay, what could be in it, weeds. Mm -hmm. um, we went to a hay auction this last week Yep. And semi loads. By semi loads, we were searching through. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know what? To a normal person, some of this hay would have looked amazing. If you didn't know what foxtail looks like, you now yep. will. Yeah. Because your horses, within probably a couple weeks, are all going to have different little ulcers in their mouth. This, I mean, those round bales, they look gorgeous. They looked beautiful. But, but when they you were actually looked at it, wasn't Timothy, it was foxtail. Yes. That, well, like Coriolisum is another thing. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know if they have it down south, but I know they have it pretty much anywhere from like the Sun Belt North. Mm -hmm. um, they have Coriolisum, which is toxic to horses, and horses typically won't eat it if it's green. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some that just really well, don't once it's dried, it. it looks the same. Mm -hmm. You know, they love it, mm -hmm. and so it's not as bitter. And it, that one you can usually see as like a purple mm -hmm. uh, weed. Bottom line with that is that we're telling you. If you want to be smart with this, make sure to get on somebody's list spring. And check in. Yeah. Check in to see if you've got, because if you want a second cut, cut of hay, you, he should know approximately when he's going to cut that hay. Right. So you should know a few weeks within that time whether or not he's going to get, he's going to have enough for you. Mm -hmm. And if not, then you need to start looking. And so some of the th things that you're going to look for um, is in your herd like what do you need do you feed grass do you feed alfalfa mm -hmm. um what what does that mean Aaron? you know like what does it mean like right. to test hay you know what what does that mean to you guys um because the funny thing is is foundered horses you think oh they can have alfalfa not necessarily mm -hmm. true so there's a lot of studies out there about the different kinds of hay and alfalfa hay gets a really bad rap mm -hmm. um it also has a lot of really good benefits that people don't know about because they're afraid of alfalfa mm -hmm. because some horses 
are um, sensitive, very to sensi alfalfa. sensitive to alfalfa. And depending upon when it's cut, you can have really high sugar or you can have really low sugar. Mm -hmm. um, typically, earlier cutting would be better for the laminitic prone horses or the mm -hmm. easy keepers because it's got more fiber. Um, but it also makes a difference of if it's cut before or after it flowers because you're gonna have higher or lower, lower sugars. And um, alfalfa is not the devil. It is actually really good for horses that have ulcers. It's really good for performance horses because it's going to help them to um, have the energy that's usable. Mm -hmm. um, so there's really a lot of good benefits to alfalfa and you know just do some searching and see if it's right for you because I have fed it successfully to lots of foundered horses and mm -hmm. they've been able to rehab on that. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of horses right. that can't be on alfalfa so then you're looking at a grass hay. Well there's like a million kinds of grasses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? I mean it can get so confusing. I mean I, I sit there and I feel bad because it's like I feel bad for myself sometimes trying to figure this out because I'm like, I thought we had this figured out. Right. And then, especially with this last load of hay that we had, there there was, we still haven't figured out what was in this hay that made these horses no, founder. We had it, it tested. tested. It tested low. And mm -hmm. so either way, there's something in there it's that, not okay. that's not okay. That yeah. You can order tools so that you can test your own hay. Mm -hmm. Where did you, we get this one from? I got that on Amazon actually. And mm -hmm. it's a hay core sampler and it's super sharp. I've cut myself many times on the end of this. And it hooks into your drill, yep. right where your screw would be. Yep. It hooks right in there, and then you just push it in into your hay bale, and you go in the side of the bale so that you get all the layers. Right. Um, and then you push it, you disconnect it, and you, you push just it. Take this little plunger, and it'll take off. And right. then you can send it to Equa Analytical Labs. Um, mm -hmm. So when I test hay, I'm going to look for not what a dairy farmer looks for. So if you find um, get a hay test like they do at these auctions. Um, they're going to test for the relative feed value, they're going to test for moisture, um, protein, and a lot of other ash. ash and stuff like that. And not all of that is applicable to horses. Right. Um, the relative feed value has nothing to do with how a horse eats. Mm -hmm. That in dairy world would tell you, or beef world would tell you how much they can absorb out of that hay that they're eating. Um, and the higher the number is typically the richer the hay for them. However, with horses, they aren't rumen, so they don't process it the same. So what I test for is, um, they, they'll send you the sheet. You can test for the carbs. Now there's some talk about um, NSC, EFC, there's all kinds of letters that it doesn't really matter um, in the general scheme of things. But the things that I know are the most important to test for is gonna be your ESC, which is gonna be your simple sugars. It's the same as like a spoonful of sugar. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to test your starch. Um, and so your sugars and your starches, you add those together and you want that percentage. It's going to be the percentage of their hay, not the grams per pound or whatever. Mm -hmm. The percentage is going to be less than 10. What we're going to do is we're going to put this on here. We'll circle the main ones that right. you're going to look at. So that way, if you were to order the same test, you can see what numbers we're looking at to make sure that it's safe for the right. horses that we're feeding. Right, and if you really want to get more knowledge of this, there's an NRC group, they, um, Dr. Kellen teaches classes on how to read this mm -hmm. and what it means to your horses. On um, the flip side of that. You can get very, very over stimulated and you can try to balance everything and believe me, I have done it. Where I have sat there with this thing and I have gone through all of the minerals, all of everything, and I have gone through and tried to make my diets perfect for my horses. And you know what? Sometimes it doesn't work and it, and it doesn't make you, sense and it drives you crazy because you know what? I just used the nice horse and he was on a perfect diet for a year, a perfect diet. Mm -hmm. And he was not able to beat the laminitis. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's, don't let yourself get out of control looking at these kind of numbers. So easily, what you need to think about is the starches and sugars. If you have a laminated course or one that's a very easy keeper, you want it under 10%. If you are riding your horses at like a decent level five days a week. Most of us ain't gonna matter. It doesn't matter. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. I have spent literally weeks looking at numbers and not had a positive outcome. Right. So don't get caught up in all of that. There is a place for it. Okay, so your main things that you're gonna look for with hay is you want hay that doesn't have mold, Mm -hmm. Okay, that also doesn't mean that you can't get hay that's stored outside though, because we did just purchase round bales that are great. Yes. And they were stored outside, but now there's a difference on being stored outside. If you see a bale, I wish I had a diagram and I could, 
and it's round, you know that it hasn't gone through a heat cycle and that the hay is going to be good. If you see a bale that looks kind of like a mushroom or an ice cream scoop, yep, you really want to look in that hay because likely it's gone through a heat cycle where it's heated up. That means that there's going to be likely mold and dust, even more so mm -hmm. in that hay. So, so how do you check? How do you check? We've got tools. Oh, yeah. You can make these tools. Mm -hmm. um, they're just a piece of metal and you put a hook on the end and you stick it in the side of the bale and you turn it a little bit and you yank, 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 and it'll pull the hay out from the middle of the bale. Right. And do you don't necessarily always want to check the middle. You want to check the middle, but you want to check about this far into that round bale from the outside because that's where the most most of your mold is going to sit. Right. If you pull that hook out and there's a poof of dust, don't buy it. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. It's just not you're you're asking for breathing problems. Yep. You're asking for trouble. And once a horse has heaves, it is so hard to, to manage. To manage. Mm -hmm. it's Even cost if... you a lot of money. Right. And then you're going to be using steroids. And guess what? That's going to lead to one more thing. That's going to lead to one more thing. Right. So either right. way, um, be very careful respiratory wise that you're feeding hay that's not full of dirt. Another thing that if you have hay that you're looking at that's tested, the thing that you're going to look at is the ash content. That is going to show you how much dirt is in your hay because that is pretty much what ash, ash is. is. Yeah, so you look at it and you definitely want it under 20%. Mm -hmm. But oh, yeah. the lower the number, the better. But you got to realize what you're feeding your horse right. there, but you know whether it's dust, dirt or something, it's the breakdown of something in there. And for every 100 pounds, let's say you had 18, 20%, that means you'd have, for every five pounds of hay that you're feeding, you'd have one pound of dirt. So think about that. Mm -hmm. Sand so, colic? Who knows? We don't. Oh, but think about that. Oh, my, my horse doesn't need sand. Right. right. It doesn't have I to. Cannot it depends tell, on what it's hay. I cannot tell you how many brown bales that I have oh. been through where they hit the gopher mounds mm -hmm. and it's just rolled into the round bale. Right. Even a square bale. I've had it in square yeah. bales. Right. Right. Or their their cutting tools are dull or something, and they pull up the roots. You're going to mm -hmm. end up with more more dirt right. there too. So something to keep in mind. Yeah, just you have to you have to definitely keep an eye on your hay because it's you they are what you feed them, mm -hmm. and you really want to be careful with that kind of stuff because then in the long run that's where your vet bills are going to come into play. Right. And whether or not you can keep weight on or off a horse, you know, if they're eating a bunch of crap, then then. Yeah. I expect them to do a good job. Well, you know, and that's the thing is you're going to either pay good money for good hay mm -hmm. or you're going to pay less than, you know, good money for less than good hay, but you're going to make up for that in vet bills in most cases. Right. Just, you know, you're going to pay for it one way or another. Right. You right. know. So think about that. Which yeah. way you going to pay? Right. So how much, how much hay do we need? Well, we actually have a hay calculator that we are going to um, let you guys download. But what's a simple calculation? If somebody's saying you're going, oh my gosh, I don't know how much hay I need. What's something that they can just for a ballpark? Really, it's one yeah. to two percent. It's one and a half to two percent per weight per pound right. of your horse. Right. So you know that's you can do the calculations. Most people think their horse is lighter than they are. Sorry, honey, mm -hmm. it's just like me getting on a scale. Uh, I am not as light as I think I was. But one one round bell per horse per month. That is a mm -hmm. very loose ballpark figure right the hay can range anywhere from 400 pounds to 2,000 pounds per round bale so right. there's gonna be a lot of swing that's basically based on the thousand pound round bale oh, so to so how do people like make their hay last longer well that one's kind of simple you call us right right you're gonna want to use a hay feeder with it it's proven we were in a study that got published but anyways you can look back you can see the results of this hay feeder study any and, feeder helps. Yes. But, but if you really want your hay to stretch, because hay is really expensive right now, it's mm -hmm. going for like upwards of $200 a ton. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. No, no, no. We more than that. We 300 paid. We yeah. did. We paid yeah. almost $300 a ton for hay, right. just so you know. Not the big orders, mm -hmm. but for other hay. And these miscellaneous onesie twosies. Yeah. <laughs> Kill you. So, you know, how do you make it stretch as long as you use a hay net? Yeah. Because it is only 6% proven waste. We know it's less, it's but way less because you're not going to go out there and pick up all the stuff that they drop. You know, you're likely right. going to right. And if you keep it in a hay feeder, like a ring feeder, or up mm -hmm. in a pedestal or whatever, your horse is not going to climb in it and crap in it and pee in it. So then you're going to have even less waste. Right. right. Yeah. So that's something to consider too. But how good does it feel to <laughs> have? Okay. Hay? The, like, is that not the best feeling as a horse owner that when you know that you have hay in your barn, you can like sleep at night and go. Oh, yes. One less thing it to worry about. It was so stressful. Okay, because we had gotten that hay, we thought, oh, great, you know, buy 120 bales of this stuff. And then it foundered our horses. 
that was not good. Not so then we good. had to, luckily the guy was great to work with and whatnot, but either way, then it's all of a sudden the stress of trying to find good hay. And when the hay is already, the, the resources are depleted, you are going to be paying. And that's what happened with us. So, um, you know, just make sure that you're on the ball. And even if you're not, like with what happened with us this year, um, you know, I'm very thankful that we did find some in the end. We hope that our, uh, our hardship <laughs> this year was able to help you feel a little bit normal if you're going through it. And right. if you aren't and you're one of the people that are awesome and you got the same hay guy or you make your own hay every year, I give you props Absolutely. someday. We hope that we can just find that person. I hope we found him now that we yeah. can just stick with. And so. you know what? You heard it from the hay chicks. Right. You did. I mean, who else would you talk to about hay? <laughs> hey. 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 All right. Well, till next time. Find the balance. Enjoy the ride. See ya. Bye.